Hello, and wishing you all a very happy new year. This is Dr. Minakshi Narula from Mentoring the Mentors, an institute that accelerates your learning curve at Mentoring the Mentors. We keep on exploring number of strategies for you for giving wonderful experience to you while teaching, as well as to create enriching, exciting experience for your students in the classes, because it's both ways. If you are not enjoying as teachers, and how can your children can enjoy your classes? So right now in this January month, we all start gearing up for the summative examination. That's the final examination because our courses, they are nearing to an end and we start preparing our students for the summative examinations to be held either in the end of February or maybe the beginning of March. Even there are some schools where even new session begins from the month of March. So we all are finding different ways for revision, for revising the syllabus, the curriculum that has been covered so far. Maybe it's term wise, maybe it's the whole year end examinations. We need revision strategies because you see sometimes when we give that kind of monotonous examinations, tests, pen and paper tests, obsolete revision strategies to our students, they don't feel interested in the classes, okay? And for that, if we want to give them ample practice, what we have to do, we have to bring innovation in our class, bring to them new kinds of revision strategies. See here teachers, I just would like to tell you, I'll be sharing with you a number of revision strategies. Now it depends upon you, which strategy suits you. Anything that, I mean, really charms you, that, really appeals to you, you can use that strategy. If one strategy doesn't work with you, no matter, you can try another strategy. This doesn't mean like each and every strategy will work for you. You keep on trying and testing in your class and should pack some of the strategies in your toolkit, teacher's toolkit, and keep on revising your toolkit at times. Without further ado, let's talk about some of the revision strategies today. See, I would just like to read a few lines for you that are there on the screen. A successful approach to revision needs to be deeply rooted in subject knowledge and sustained over time. So subject teachers need to explicitly teach the strategy, model it, and offer guided practice before we expect our students to use them effectively. What all strategies that you are going to use, make sure first have a trial in your class, you will get to know which strategy works for you, which strategy works for a particular group or I mean age or class of students accordingly, you keep on revising those strategies. First strategy that I'm going to talk to you today, it's a jam strategy, just a minute strategy. We have been using this in our classes. It's a kind of, you see, classic radio game, where we ask our students to talk about any of the topic, any of the text for a minute. The children, they have to speak for a minute, but let me tell you, there are no pauses allowed, no repetition of the sentences to be allowed, right? So just three kinds of three strikes and you are out, right? No pauses, no hesitations, no repetitions. So this strategy, it harnesses the self-explanation effect, right? In short, if we can elaborate on this topic and explain it well, you have retrieved it from memory. You see, it's a kind of memory building game as well. The children, they have to speak instantaneously. You are giving them just one minute to speak and no repetition. So that's why they have to bring those points into their working memory. That is really very helpful. So you may use this strategy in your class. I'll be sharing with you a few glimpses as well that I have captured while using this strategy in my class. Here is a glimpse of jam session, just a minute, where there are so many, you see different, different topics, maybe of the same chapter are being displayed on uh, their glass panels, window panes, the work has already been done by students, right? But now the students, they have to talk about each other's work, or maybe they can explain their work in a minute, 
This is how, I mean, you can plan this strategy, any kind of variations you can bring in the strategy as per the needs of the students, as per the requirements that you would wish to. Another strategy that I'm going to discuss with you today for revision is PTT, prepare to teach. It's also similar to just a minute strategy, right? And it involves the common idea of getting the students to teach a peer or a particular topic for revision. You see, once more, it gets students to elaborate on their knowledge. Even let me tell you, teachers, so many topics that were not clear to us when we were students, we got more clarity on those concepts when we started teaching the same. I hope you would agree with me. If yes, do ping in the chat box. If not, even then you can share your remarks, your feedback, your suggestions, your comments in the comment section below. So prepare to teach. In the previous slide I showed you, I'll just show you once again, here, there is one child who is explaining peer teaching, right? The child is preparing a particular topic or a concept to be explained to the peer group, to the other students in the class. And here, in this case, this is another variation to this strategy. You may divide the classroom into different groups and give, allot them different topics. Just to give you one example, if you are going to revise parts of speech in your class, Accordingly, you may divide different parts of speech to different different groups where they'll be able to explain the same to the class in their groups. Here, right now in this picture, what is happening is children, they are talking about circulatory system. In my classroom, I divided various organ systems like that and each group was given a particular organ system. So they explained accordingly in the class. They prepared very well. They prepared in detail because in this case, there would be Q&A as well. After explanation, they have to answer the queries being raised by other groups. So this is a very, very wonderful strategy in the class. Why every time as teachers, we have to speak in that case, students, they become the passive listeners in the class. We have to have learner-centered classrooms where teacher will be acting as just a facilitator. We need to just facilitate. We need to get number of wonderful strategies in the classroom where even children should be coming to the fore and would be speaking about it. So my dear teacher, the third revision strategy that I'm going to share with you is the use of effective graphic organizers. Students need to be active in revision, not just in reading their notes and doing coloring in with the rainbow of the highlighters, but graphic organizers. They are the handy vehicle to get students reconstructing their revision topics, making meaningful links and connections. In the classroom, you may make them sit in the class, and come up with different points where they will be able to find the links, the connections between the different topics, hence different kinds of graphic organizers. They are really, very really helpful strategies for making them revise their previously learned topics. There are a number of graphic organizers available. I will be conducting a full-fledged session on different kinds of graphic organizers. A few of them, they are there in the image that you can see here on the screen, Venn diagram, spider maps, mind maps, the concept maps, right? Even fishbone diagram is there, sequential thinking model is there. There are ample graphic organizers. We will be sharing soon a video, especially on graphic organizers. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel so that you will be able to get information as and when the video will be uploaded. And next, if we talk about, see here, this is another form of graphic organizer that has been used for revision in the class. What you have to do is you have to explain the topic to your students and you have to ask them to come prepared in any form. In any form means any kind of graphic organizer that they love to. Right, and here my students, they presented the same in the form of comic strips. That is a wonderful idea. Even that in the languages as well. 
English language, Hindi language, whatever, Punjabi language, any kind of language that you are teaching there also, the students, they can present the same in the form of dialogues, right? And even different systems can be explained wonderfully through comic strips. They can come up with their own comic, own thoughts and characters. They can have their imaginary characters as well. Any kind of dialogue forms they can write, maybe phrases they can use, maybe write in complete sentences, sentences but that would be an innovative way of revision. Please make sure you use it and share your feedback with me. Another strategy is a coronal note-taking strategy. You may ask your students, like what would previously learned topic in detail they have learned, in detail they have written some of the points. Now they have to present the same methodically in the coronal note-taking strategy. Here, what they have to do, they don't have to write each and everything in detail, right? Uh, and this is a strategy which actually, as you can see on the screen, this is a strategy that utilizes the well-known note-taking approach in the coronal method. It's named after the US university. This strategy gets students thinking metacognitively, asking questions, noting key terms, summarizing the content being revised. What they have to do in this format, as you can see here on the screen, there are different formats of coronal nodes. What they have to do is they have to divide their page in this format where they have to write the main idea on suppose the left-hand side, it's rendered the main idea or maybe some of the equations they can write, right? And they have to write the keywords, important dates if they have been mentioned, important years are there, names of people, places if they are there, they have to note it down because these are a kind of clues. You don't have to write each and everything. You don't have to write complete sentences, but you have to cover these points if they are available in a particular topic. Suppose you are teaching them about maybe Mughal Empire, maybe World War, whatever you are teaching them, there they have to write the keywords and different ideas, important dates, important people, places, right? Different countries involved. And then any kind of information that has been stressed time and again, repeatedly that is coming throughout the topic, throughout the chapter, they have to mention that. Ideas, brainstorming written on the board, over overhead projector, any kind of ideas that you want them to remember, right? Kind of points to focus, key points, key terms and all, right? So diagrams they can draw, pictures, right? And formulas, if we are talking about mathematics or maybe sciences, it is there. So any kind of equations, if they are there. So it is just at a glance, brief they have to write, not the details one, so that they can quickly recapitulate what all things they have to remember, right? So this is there, I was just talking about coronal note taking strategy. You may take a screenshot right now from this screen. Let me do it for you. Yes, now it will be easy for you. You may take the screenshot, you may, search the same on internet, you will be able to get many ideas for that, right? So here, next are the exam wrappers. See, exam wrappers is a wonderful revision strategy. Exam wrappers, they consist of several questions and activities that students engage in now before and or after they complete an exam which focus on their study strategies and help them learn from their mistakes. They are most suitable for formative and summative midterm exams. Let me tell you what happens in that. So if a child has appeared in any exam, before appearing in that exam, you may ask a few questions to your students. Are they completely prepared to appear in the exam? Have they revised all the chapters? any chapters that they have left and why did they leave those chapters? Maybe they were thinking, they were not able to understand, they were not having proper time to revise those chapters, they were having some challenges in those chapters, any kind of questions they're coming into their mind, they'll be able to write how much time they have devoted preparation 
for preparing for the examination and all. So once they complete their exam, after that, you also again give them exam wrappers, like assessing their papers, a kind of self-assessment, some kind of questions you may give to them, like after their examination, what were their ex expectations earlier? Like, were they able to achieve that? The chapters that they have left there did not prepare earlier. What do they think right now about it? Are they happy with the performance? Or what is their next plan? How are they going to prepare for the upcoming examinations? Here are a few questions that you can see on the screen right now. You may also capture a screenshot, exam wrappers. See, exam wrappers, here it is. As uh, with the first exam, this activity is designed. So there are a few questions. Approximately how much time did you spend preparing for this exam? What percentage of your test preparation time was spent in each of these activities? Like reading the textbook, rereading the textbook, various important sections, reviewing homework solutions, solving problems for practice, reviewing own notes, reviewing material from the board, smart board, or maybe notes shared by the teachers or any other material they have referred to, right? So after the exam, they will reevaluate their first exam wrappers and they will check, yes, where did they lack? What now and how they have to improve? What are the improvement strategies, right? So right now, as you can see, it's related to mathematics that has been written over here. They are having trouble with the particular area. It can be vectors, trigonometry, algebra, Maybe uh, in sciences, they were not able to understand force, pressure, or they have to revise those topics. I mean, let them evaluate themselves. Rather, teacher is suggesting them, like, beta, in your examination, I have found spelling errors. So you need to work on your spelling skills. So let the students come up with that. Why did they get this question wrong? Why did they, why the marks have been deducted here? Let the child think about it. Ask them to point out, make notes. And it's not necessary that you have to go for predefined questions. Let the children come up with their views also. You can help them doing this as well. You can give them few clues how they can prepare their report after going through the papers. Now, Another strategy is select and elect strategy. This is another important strategy that gets students thinking hard about the revision that is select and elect. You get your students to select the most salient facts, ideas, concepts, or terms from a given revision topic before then asking them to elect what they deem the most significant knowledge or idea that they need to understand for the explanation. This gets students actively engaging with the revision material whilst being metacognitive about what's the most salient information they need to remember. What you have to do, suppose I am, I'll just give you one example, you'll understand it very easily. Suppose I am talking about various modes of nutrition in my class. And then I'll ask my student, these are a list of topics that have been given. Usually in the textbook, we are having in the front where it is written the contents, name of the chapter and underneath the topics are being given. We may ask our students from these topics, select the topics that are there as per the term they are going to be asked in the upcoming examination. Now they have to elect from that, what all topics they think are very important to be revised, what all topics they are easy for them and other topics they need, maybe the teacher to explain those topics once again, or maybe they want some PTT that is uh, prepared to teach kind of strategy in the classroom or some of the topics that they would like to go for jam, just a minute strategy. Accordingly, ask them to divide it into it. 
it may happen like they find it easy like different modes of nutrition are there when they talk about autotrophs heterotrophs it's very easy for them because they have been doing the same in the previous classes as well and this may happen like there are a few topics that are new to them talking about parasites right talking about saprophytes this is these are topics that are new to them as per their grade so they would like to go for another revision on those topics so this is how you can go for this kind of strategy in the class another strategy is a topic ranking strategy remember the students they are often not the best to judge that's why we are not dependent upon them we need to help them right you need to help them in that but first of all ask them like please do rank their own knowledge of their topics being revised this is similar to select and elect ask them they have to choose the three topics that they would like to revise in the order of like number one would be the priority first that they want this topic need to be revised first this is because of the lack of time maybe when you are nearing the examination you are having short of time you may ask them you all select which all topics to be revised so everybody will be able to give you one list or you can collect the data through google forms as well this is very easy to uh, you see um, analyze through google forms microsoft soft forms and number of other apps are available through which you will be able to access the data from the students here actually the students are actively participating it's not the teacher who is uh, Now, suggesting them that this topic is very important, so that I am revising this topic. No, let them come up there with their own topics that they want you to help them revise. Right. So another strategy is quizzing strategy. Maybe it's good, it's old-fashioned strategy, but it always works. The methodology changes. Maybe you are asking your question in generally dividing the students into different teams in the class. quizzing is happening if not you are giving them google forms microsoft forms quizzes quiz agile right there are number of another platform kahoot number of another digital tools you can use for quizzing right quizlet is there maybe flash cards you are using for asking them different kinds of questions so you can use different kinds of online offline maybe hybrid mode of strategies for quizzing in the class you see there is a kind of healthy competition in the classroom when you go for quizzing right so another as i was just talking about flash cards help them develop different kinds of flash cards in the classes uh divide the topics into different groups each group has to prepare some flash cards where on the one side they have to write question on another side they will be writing the answer answer can be in one word it can be in phrase it can be in the form of picture as well depending upon the age group depending upon the subject that you are teaching so these kinds of flash cards can be prepared by the students for the junior classes teachers they can prepare these kinds of flash cards and if you are conducting the same on online platform in uh, quizlet already pre -pre prepared forms are available and even then you can create your own uh, forms on flash cards from quizlet right and there is another tool i got to know even yesterday flippity i will just share the link in the description box flippity is another freely available tool where you will be able to create various kinds of flash cards online see now look at the screen here on the screen uh, as i have seen shown you flash cards can be prepared in this manner also i mean the children here they are revising like for junior grades they have drawn a circle they have mentioned this to recognize what is this picture all about how many sides are there how many vertices are there so these kinds of uh, flash cards they can be prepared by the students right in their classes so now see they can prepare posters as well in groups ask them to prepare the posters and then present poster presentation this is another wonderful revision strategy that you can use in the class why always ask them questions why always ask give them pen and paper 
So another, let them create songs and raps on their own, or you may get wonderful songs and raps on internet as well, right? If you don't have time, like students, they are creating their own songs, you, or you can always take help from your music department, music teachers, they can compose songs for them or children, they can come up right, who are music smart, they can come up with their own songs. Here in this picture that you can see on the screen, the children, they uh, sang this song on water cycle. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation. I'll just share the link for this song also in the description box. And But this song is also available on my channel. You can go through that as well. There was a lot of fun when they all sung this song on water cycle and the concepts were clear. Very beautifully, it was explained what is evaporation, condensation and pre precipitation. So now role plays. Role plays are always engaging and fun in the classrooms. Here, as you can see on the screen, we had a role play and there's a complete involvement of the teacher or the facilitator here. We had role play on food chain, as you can see in the circle. And we had role plays on various seasons. What do we wear in a particular season, right? What are the various changes? So it's not necessary. I mean, if these are fourth or fifth grade students, you can do always. I mean, up to middle classes, you can go for role plays in the senior grades also. I mean, the type of the role play changes. Right? And it's not necessary that every time they have to come up with proper props. No, they can create their own props and without props also they can take part in role plays, right? So that kind of strategy also works for revision. Because here you see they are working in a group, collaborating and communicating and creativity. See, see, I mean, and critically they are thinking. So all 21st century skills are being focused. They are being enhanced, right? So here, red, yellow, green zone. As you can see, it's a reflection strategy. I have even a shared picture of my whiteboard too, where I have mentioned the topics under three zones, red zone, yellow zone, and green zone, right? Red zone, I asked my students, I have given them a list of topics. I said, as per you, what whole topics you think they fall under red zone category and they want, they are saying that they don't understand those topics. They have forgotten those topics. It may happen. The topics that you have taught them five to six months ago and no revision was done. And really they have been vanished now from their mind. They want you to teach again. For that, I have mentioned the same under red zone. And wherever the students, they were finding under yellow zone, they were having some clarity, some idea, but they want you to take those topics maybe once again, some clues to be given, a quick revision they require. I have mentioned under yellow. And then I wrote the names here under leaders, right? The leaders, for them, all the topics were clear under green zone. So that's why I made leader, leaders and I asked them, they will be explaining those topics through PTT strategy, prepare to teach or maybe peer teaching, peer tutoring, whatever you say. So this is a wonderful strategy in which you even make peers, make different groups where children, they teach each other. And some of the topics that students can't deal with, you as facilitator can take those topics. So here, students, they are acting as teachers, right? So now another strategy, gamification. Everybody on this platform, online, offline, everybody is talking about gamification. And who doesn't love games? Everybody does, right? On mobile phone, we keep on playing games and we got we become addict, addicted to addicted to all those games. We can't stay without that. But here, as you can see here in the picture, my students they are exploring about force, direction, right? How it works through a game that has been prepared by them in the class. 
so they are planning they are preparing their own games creativity innovation hands on real life integration they are participating in that as a team work they are working collaboration see they are discussing critical thinking some kind of innovation is being developed so these kinds of games that you can see on the screen and here on the left hand side on this screen where it is written biodegradable non biodegradable here also this game it uh, here this game was played by my senior grade students they conducted this games for the junior grades because the topics they were similar they said we will be taking this topic sixth graders taught this topic to fourth graders i took them to my class i said fine you will be helping them to learn this is how the junior grade they are learning and the senior grade they are getting that kind of recapitulation you can have such kind of activities in your class for revision so for today the last revision strategy i'm sharing with you is subject integration this is really very important and will help you revise the topics accordingly for example in our subject it is like that some of the topics they are being uh, covered in different different subjects for example in sciences the students they are learning about agriculture practices same topic is being taught to them in social sciences as well so together the topic can be taken both the teachers can together take the, that topic for revision that will not only save time but when you are standing in a class and you are discussing the same all together you will not be having any kind of confusions you can clear all your doubts because it may happen like when i am taking that topic in my class when i'm teaching science maybe i am giving them different perspective right and maybe some questions they are left unattended because that questions that may be handled well by a teacher who is taking up social sciences she can clear those questions very well maybe i am not that competent enough to clear those questions so likewise as you can see here in the screen there was a chapter in hindi rakt ke ansh so rakt ke ansh topic was in hindi i as a science teacher went to the class i talked about various uh, rakt ke ansh whatever is there in the blood right different components of the blood i conducted an activity i talked about red platelets right red blood cells white plate white blood cells and the platelets we talked about all those things plasma and all uh, right so we together took up this topic and students they got a clarity on that topic right so like this you will be able to conduct different kinds of uh, innovative revision strategies in your class if you know some another wonderful strategies don't forget to drop them in the comment section below thank you from mentoring the mentors we'll meet you again with another wonderful strategy maybe it can be revision strategy or maybe a formative assessment strategy or another engaging strategies till then wish you very happy new year once again goodbye thank you